good morning. Today is Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And we have now been apart for three full months, or 12 Sundays. Isn't that hard to believe? The weeks have faded away, and I know that all of you are feeling the same level of sadness that I experience each week as we gather to lead worship in an empty sanctuary. Rest assured, you are all missed so much, and I wish with all of my heart that we could be together, but it is just not possible at this time. As you know, I've been away for the last couple of Sundays. Karen and I took a couple of weeks off to prepare for our move to Stevens City. I want to thank both Jeff Mickle and Drew Enns for leading worship these past two Sundays. And it is my hope that you were refreshed and inspired by the messages that they offered to you. I'm joined again today by members of our staff, Sylvia Mulherin at the piano and Paige Powell, who will also be assisting with music. Sadly, Amy Tate was not able to be with us today. So as we begin our service, would you please join me in a moment of prayer? All-knowing God, we gather together on this Pentecost Sunday with praise and thanksgiving for who you are and for all that you have done for us. You know us better than we know ourselves, all our thoughts and actions, and yet you love us. No matter where we go or what we do, your love encircles us ahead and behind, gently leading and guiding and blessing. And we praise you for your love and the faithful presence of your Holy Spirit that guides and directs us. May your Spirit move upon us once again today within our hearts and our minds as we worship together. Help us to examine our attitudes and actions, to lay bare the things that we need to confess before you. And may we be challenged by your holy word and guide us on to paths that lead to life. For we, O oh Lord, are your people, called by your name. Guide us now, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn today, which we will invite you to sing along with, is O Spirit of the Living God, and you will find the lyrics printed on the screen for you.
If you have children in the home, I invite them to gather around at this time for our children's message today. Our scripture text is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. And it says this. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but in the same God who does the work in all of us. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, I was going to bring my toolbox today and open it up and share some things out of it. But the problem is that we just moved and my toolbox is rather large and it's kind of heavy right now. And so I had to take some tools out of the box and I put them in another box that I brought with me today. Now I would imagine that in each of your homes you have a toolbox a lot like mine. That there are many kinds of tools that your mom and dad might use around the home when they need to make repairs. Now, what kind of tools do you suppose that I might have brought to share with you today? Well, you know, there I think there is a tool for everything. There are all kinds of unique tools out there that I don't even own, but I know that they have been created by somebody that came up with a great idea and said, we need this tool to do this particular job. Well, now, let me ask you this. If I needed to drive a nail into a board, what tool do you think I would need? What tool? Well, let's open up my box and see. Tell your moms and dads what tool you think it is. It's a hammer, isn't it? Yeah. We would need the hammer to drive the nail into the wall. Here's my hammer. Now, if I were putting together a bookshelf and needed to put in a screw to hold it together, what tool do you think I would need to use to, to make that happen? Well, you probably got that right, boys and girls, as well. It would be a screwdriver, wouldn't it? Well, let's see. Suppose I needed to measure something. What tool do you think I would need? Some of you might have said a yardstick or a ruler. What I would use is mine, what my father-in-law used to call rule or measure. And this is what we would then measure the length of something before we cut it. And let's suppose that I needed to make a hole in a wall or in a board. What kind of equipment would I need for that? What kind of tool would I need for that, boys and girls? Well, I would need a power drill, wouldn't I? You put a bit in the end of the drill, and plug it in, and turn it on, and then you can drill a hole, and you can put a screw or anything you want to put in, and it would work very nicely for you. So these are just some of my tools that are tools of the trade that you might need around home to do the kind of work that's necessary from time to time. But you know, the church is like God's toolbox. God has a lot of jobs to do, and he's given the people of his church different gifts and talents to help him do those jobs that are so important. We, boys and girls, are his tools. To some, he is given musical talent to help lead others in worship. To some, he's given the talent of teaching so that they can help others to learn about him. There is no one person in the church that can do everything, boys and girls, and yet there are people who can do a lot of things very well, but not everything. Listen to what the Bible says. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Now, if I needed to tighten a screw in my glasses, 
I could not use this screwdriver. Why? Because it's too big. I would need a tiny screwdriver that's made for the tiny screws in my glasses. You see, it doesn't matter what your talent is. And it doesn't matter if you're big or if you're small. What does matter is that when God has a job for you to do, you need to be right there in his toolbox, ready and willing for him to use you to make a difference. Boys and girls, remember that we are all God's tools. Each one of us must be ready and willing for God to use us to do his work. And so, why don't you join me now, boys and girls, and repeat after me this prayer as we ask God to help us to be tools in God's kingdom. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Dear Lord we thank you, thank you that you have given each of us, given each of us special, abilities special abilities to do things for you. To do things for you. We pray that when you need us, you need us we, will be ready we will be ready and willing to do, and ready to do what you need for us to do. What you need for us to do. Amen. Amen. I hope that you've learned something important today, boys and girls, about being tools in God's toolbox. Thank you, boys and girls. I love you. Bless you. Now we're very privileged to have our organist and accompanist, Sylvia Mulherin. She today is going to play a piece at the organ for us. So I invite you all to enjoy and to give praise to God for her wonderful talent. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the epistle for Pentecost Sunday. It is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. Hear these words. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. 
And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are at one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join us in the singing of our next hymn. It is Spirit of the Living God. You will find the lyrics printed on the screen. And so we invite you to join us in singing this hymn today. Two primary meanings 
of that phrase in the service. The first was military service, the service given by all those men and women who served to defend and protect our country. That's why George Washington asked for no pay for serving as commander and chief of the Continental Forces during the Revolutionary War. He looked at what he was doing as a service to his country, so he refused to accept any pay. Nor did he submit expenses which were added up and amounted to nearly ten times what his salary would have been. Before taking office as president, he again offered to serve without pay and with all of his expenses covered out of pocket rather than by the nation. And this time, Congress courteously declined. This past week, we celebrated Memorial Day and we honored all of those who served our nation and especially those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Sadly, for all too many folks, it's just become another day off, the beginning of summer, and the first day to splash in the pool. You know, my dad served in the Navy during World War II, and he was stationed in Italy in 1944 and served as a chief radio operator on a ship. Now, like many fathers and grandfathers, they were fortunate to return home from the war. And my dad loved to share stories of his time in the service with friends and with family. Now, as Karen and I were preparing to move to our new home in Stevens City, I found something that I think is quite unique. I found my dad's original Navy uniform, and I brought just the top of his uniform to show you today. It smells like mothballs. It's been well preserved, but we must understand that this was put on my dad's body back in the 1940s, and so it's over 70 years old. I did not bring the trousers or the hat. In fact, when I was 18 years of age, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's how big your pastor was. I was able to put this uniform on at age 18, and my dad took a picture of me in it and was very proud of the fact that I could wear it, and it reminded him so much of his time of serving in the Navy. I also, as I was going through boxes, found my dad's dog tags and his honorable discharge papers. It made me very proud of my dad. Many of our esteemed St. George's members spent most of their lives serving in the branch of the military. And we want you to know that we are eternally grateful for your sacrificial service to our nation. We love you and we appreciate what you've given on our behalf. Military service is one form of service when we talk about being in the service. There's a second association of being in the service that is, was made bare in a hit television show known as Downton, Downton Abbey. This drama demonstrated what it meant in the early 20th century to be in the service. Of course, it meant being a servant to others. In the service meant a life lived in service to others, whether that service was being a butler or a governess or a cook or a maid or a footman or working, serving part of a larger whole and probably not receiving a whole lot of accolades for doing what you were doing. Service has always been part and parcel of being in the service. Downton Abbey was a huge hit on both sides of the pond, and some have classified it as a high-class soap opera or a subway sandwich of love stories. It has a castle as a set, the British Isles as scenery, World War I as a backdrop, quirky characters, and enough plot lines to sketch out the Milky Way. Yet while the emotions that drive the characters and their stories are eternally familiar, 
Love, money, desire, ambition, acceptance, success, all which are the social fabric of human needs are played out in a manner that is fairly foreign to us. The stark class division between the upstairs and the downstairs, between who served and those who were being served, is no longer part of our everyday experience for most of us. Nor is the sense that those who were being served were also in the service of those who served. But the call to be in the service continues, not for serving the newly rich as a status symbol, butler, a resurrected position inspired by the show that can reportedly command as much as $250,000 a year among the uber-rich, but to be in service for all members of the family of God. Now, even if you've never worn a uniform, even if you've never gone through boot camp, even if you've ever, never saluted a superior officer or been a house servant, if you are a baptized Christian, you are in the service. No matter what your background, whether it is silk sheets or back streets or corporate spreadsheets, we are one community in service to each other and to the world. Paul's lesson on spiritual gifts in this week's epistle reading wasn't about the variety of spiritual gifts that might be available. Paul loved to make lists. And his list of giftings were not meant to be exhaustive and definitive, but expressive and suggestive. Paul's lesson on spiritual gifts was to teach the community that whatever their spiritual gifts might be, they all came from the same source and that all who were gifted by the Holy Spirit should be governed by the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that calls us all to be in the service. There's an old saying, many folks want to serve God but only as advisors. Paul would have none of that. All Christians receive the Holy Spirit at the moment of their baptism. The giftings of the Spirit are not to make us feel good or feel superior to others in our faith community. Whatever is graced and gifted to each one of us is for one purpose only, for the common good of all. We are graced and gifted, not for ourselves, but for a life in the service. In the service of others, for the common good within the body of Christ and without, in the world in which we live. You know, I think we're still nervous about speaking about spiritual gifts. As hard as Paul tried to disarm the Corinthians' claim to special gifts, that particular stigma has been historically hard to unstick. In the 21st century, claiming a spiritual gift sounds in the ears of the world a little stagey and strange. In the first century, Paul reminded folks that spiritual gifts were not individually oriented. In fact, in Paul's mind, they were never to elevate the individual. Only the ignorant and those not quite with it among the Corinthians would judge them as such. Instead, Paul showed the new Christian community of believers in Corinth, almost all of them Gentiles at the time, that the Spirit of God that they had received at that moment of their baptism transformed them, gifted them by making them into bodybuilders. At baptism, we are called to put service over self. At baptism, the question changes from what can I get out of this? What can I get out of my faith? To how can my faith help me to serve God, the body of Christ, and the common good? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what Pentecost is all about. It's about the Spirit coming upon us and giving us 
gifts and abilities to be the body of Christ alive and well and vibrant in the world. And even in the midst of our pandemic, we need to continue to be the church. The church is not closed. Just the building itself. The church is still very much alive. For we, the body of Christ, are the church. The body we are called to build is, of course, the body of Christ, the church, the temple of the Holy Spirit. is Christ's fullest human presence in this world. In bodybuilding, there are no insignificant, no unimportant roles. If Paul were writing to encourage the mutuality and reciprocity of all spiritual gifts for today's church, his list would probably include insurance advisors, tech support gurus, systems analysts, daycare workers, after-school education mentors, those serving on the front lines of the pandemic health care maze, grocery clerks, police officers, fire and rescue workers. The list is endless. Now maybe those don't sound like spiritually significant gifts given by the Holy Spirit after Pentecost. Like Paul's list including things such as wisdom and knowledge and faith and healing and speaking in tongues. But they are absolutely essential to the spiritual life and health of Christ's body in the first century. Spiritual gifts are whatever makes it possible for the members of the community of faith to add to the well-being and life of the community. In the service means there are no personal ends to serve, only the common good. The Knights of Columbus have a great motto. In service to one, in service to all. You see, every Christian when asked if they have been or are in the service should say, yes! At the moment of our baptism, we are all joined together in a community of service. We only await the director from the Holy Spirit to lead us in our path of service. And in fact, there is an old slogan that needs to be resurrected. Doctrine divides, service unites. Maybe it was with that slogan in mind that in 1972, the Book of Worship, published by the United Methodist Church, in its great thanksgiving, recited at the Lord's table, ended with this line, Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in service to all the world. Christian service is at the root of what it means to be a Christ follower. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples at Pentecost, they were given the ability to speak in other languages and were then sent forth to proclaim the gospel, to serve the last, the lost, and the least, of the world to evangelize and transform the world for the cause of Christ. That's what you and I have been called to. That's what the Holy Spirit has come upon us to enable us to do and to do well. And with all of the gifts and graces that we have in community all pulled together, we become one great toolbox for the cause of Christ. They can perform and fulfill the work and ministry of the church that Christ has called us to. It is essential in the lives of everyone that has been filled with the Holy Spirit to understand that we are called, all called, to ministry. All called to be in the service. Not just your pastors and your staff. And not just the key lay leaders of the church. All of you, all of us, have been called to be in service. The hymn says, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our witness, and by our service. A room service waiter at a Marriott hotel learned that the sister of a guest had just died. The waiter named Charles brought a sympathy card 
had hotel staff members sign it and gave it to the distraught guest with a piece of hot apple pie and ice cream. Just a simple gesture of kindness. A few days later, a letter was written which said, Dear Mr. Marriott, the letter had been written by the bereaved guest to the president of Marriott Hotels. I've never met you, the letter said, and I don't need to meet you, because I met Charles, and I know what you stand for. I want to assure you that as long as I live, I will stay at your hotels, and I will tell my friends to do the same. All of us have been through or been serviced by the people at Chick-fil-A. They have learned what it means to be in service. And what's their line that they give us when you say thank you? It's always my pleasure. It's their pleasure to serve us. All of us have called to be in the service as part of the body of Christ. Paul says we have all been given gifts by the Holy Spirit. We must faithfully use them to the glory of God. And during this pandemic, it has been difficult for us to find ways to serve others. But I know firsthand that there are those within our church family that have been providing meals for some of our elderly members, providing breakfast for folks who are unable to see each other so that they can do FaceTime with one another and have an opportunity to be sharing a meal on each side of the camera and have fellowship with one another. On Sunday, today, at noon, there are many of us that will be gathering on Zoom for a virtual potluck. And we'll have the opportunity to see one another and to have fellowship. And there's going to be some fun games, playing some bingo and doing some other things. We hope that most of you will join us or be joining us today at noon uh, for this particular wonderful potluck meal. It's so important. Some churches have continued to provide food pantries, bag lunches for children, and one United Methodist Church on our district opened up a COVID-19 testing site in their parking lot this week. Creative ways to show the love of Christ and to be in the service. For most of my life, We've called our gatherings on Sunday morning the worship service. Often when we talk about Sunday, we simply say, I attended service this week. I love how we call our coming together each week, not worship as much as service. But a colleague challenged me a few years ago not to call it the worship service, but a service of worship. Think about that. A service of worship. Let us discover ways to be in service and witness that become a service of active worship in all that we do and all that we say. Because everything we do and say should be praise and adoration and prayer unto God. Worship. This week I invite you to use the language of worship but also use the language of service. You see, the heart of Christianity, brothers and sisters, lies in the incarnation. The divine nature is self-emptying and self-sacrificial, not self-serving, but in the service. Will you join the service this week? I pray it will be so. Let this be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen, and all the people said, Amen. amen. As we unite our hearts in prayer this morning, I do have a number of prayer concerns that I would like to share with you. Uh, Virginia Bennett, who is the mother of Penny, uh, would love for you to continue to lift her in prayer. Sierra Salmon, uh, Debbie Salmon's daughter, had some outpatient surgery this week. We invite you to keep her in your prayers as she heals and mends. 
Joan McDonald is home. She is being provided 24-hour uh, nursing care at the home. Uh, she is grateful for all of the love, the care, the meals that have been provided. And so I want to encourage you to continue to pray for her as she gets stronger each and every day. We also continue to invite you to pray, pray for all the healthcare professionals and first responders, all those returning to work as businesses open up across the Commonwealth and the nation, for those that have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and those that have died and their families. I know that you've been listening to the news and many regions that have opened up and where they've allowed people to return to worship are now seeing a spike again of the COVID virus. Even in South Korea, where they had 2,000 worshipers gathered together for worship, encouraging them all to wear masks, over 400 members have now been diagnosed with COVID-19. So we need to be mindful of this and we need to be very careful about what we do and how we do. And that's why it's very difficult for us to simply fling the doors open wide and say, come on back. But we encourage you to continue to stay grounded and stay connected in prayer and in relationships with others. Also, we are again alerted to another insidious deadly virus that is eating away at our culture. And it is the virus of racism. In the last few days, we've added to the long list of people who've been victimized by it. Barely has Ahmaud Arbery's murder been surfaced, and now we learn of George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis and Christian Cooper's humiliation in New York. There, these are not isolated cases. They are part of a growing trend that we are called to stand against in the name of Jesus Christ. Silence or denial, my friends, only contributes to the spread. So I pray that each of us will find ways in our, within our own lives and within our congregation to lift up these names and to hear the cries for, of those addressing the ongoing injustices and healings, the wounds of the racious, racial virus. Let's also pray for an end to the violence that is a, a product of this, these insidious events that the people would stop looting and burning buildings and that there would be a sense of peace and calm. Surely Jesus shows us that the remedy and the vaccination, if we will humbly turn and seek his help and persistently follow him on this stony road to a long journey, a vaccination for the virus of racism and a vaccination for the COVID-19 virus. May the church shine strong with the love of God in Jesus Christ into the light of these epidemics. And may the remedy start at home and in our own families of faith as we seek to build beloved communities of healing, of love, of reparation and reconciliation. Would you join me in prayer? Oh Lord, we are grateful this day for the countless blessings again that you've given us every day. And Lord, in the midst of this pandemic, sometimes we take those blessings for granted because we have a tendency to fuss and complain about the things we can't do. And yet we still have so many wonderful freedoms. We again express our gratitude for the technology that allows us to worship in this format. And I thank you, Lord, for all of those that have tuned in today to be a part of this service and ask your special blessing upon each one and each family that we as the body of Christ at St. George's continue to be connected, to be in the service in ways that are very tangible, not only within these walls when we have the opportunity to regather here, but most importantly beyond these walls in the communities where we live. We pray, O oh Lord, that our church would continue to grow and to prosper in the future, that you will continue to sustain the work that we are about, to provide the resources that we need to continue to move into the future. Lord, we're entering a season of, of transition in which I, the pastor of this community, will be leaving and entering retirement, and a new pastor, Sandy Plasters, will be coming to be the leader spiritual leader of this congregation. 
And oh, how difficult it will be for her, oh Lord, to step into this community, not having a congregation seated before her, people that she can be face to face with, that she can begin to make connections and get to know about their lives and about their joys and aches and pains and needs and loves. So Lord, we just commit all of this into your care and keeping and ask for your continued guidance. And Lord, we pray for our world, a world that sees so much need for all the people that are sick, all those that are serving, all those that are working on the front lines and the businesses that are opening up. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for protection. We pray for guidance. We pray for the move of your spirit in a way that would help those that are trying to discover a vaccine to make that discovery quickly, to get it out on the market and so that all of us can be vaccinated and that, Lord, that we can move forward in our culture yet knowing that what was normal before will not be normal again. And help us to make those adjustments and to move forward with grace and love and dignity. Lord, we also want to ask for your guidance and your prayers for those of our membership who have a special need for your healing and care today. Continue to hold Virginia Bennett in your arms of healing and care. As Sierra amends from her surgery, as Joan McDonald regains her strength, Lord, we ask that you just take care of these very special people and that you allow those that are there to serve them to be your hands of healing and blessing and care in their lives. And so these and all the things that are heavy upon our hearts and minds today, O oh Lord, we lay at the, your feet. We give them over to you and we trust you by faith that you will answer our prayers, that you will set us free, and give us a peace that passes all human understanding. We ask all of this today in the name of Christ. Amen. Just have a couple of announcements that I'd like to bring to you today. First, I want to let you know that Karen and I did get moved on Tuesday. It was an exhausting day. The movers came at 9 to, to load. They did not have a large enough truck. They had to call for a second truck. And by the time they got everything unloaded and put into place and all the furniture reassembled, the shelves put back into the cases, it was 8.15 when they pulled out of the house in Stevens City. Karen and I went and got dinner at Taco Bell, which I despise, by the way. But at that point, I didn't care. Went back, took showers, and made a nose dive into bed, only to discover that we could not sleep because we were too exhausted. But we are grateful to be in our new home. Uh, it will be beautiful once we get it all set up. And uh, thank you for your prayers and concern. Many of you have sent us emails letting us know that you've been thinking about us during this time. We are both tired and exhausted, uh, but we are feeling great about what the future holds. Um, also, want to let you know that on Sunday, as I mentioned in my sermon, that there will be a opportunity for you to gather at your table and be a part of a Zoom event that will be a potluck lunch. And CP and a bunch of others have put this together for, for this afternoon at noon. And so we encourage you to be a part of that. And there will be other events like this down the road as we move forward. But uh, please come. They've got some games planned and some exciting things that will be shared. And we trust that you will be with us at noon today. As we close out our service today, we would like to invite you to join us in singing our closing hymn, Make Me a Servant. You'll find the lyrics printed on the screen.
beautiful hymn that ties in with the heart of my message today to be in the service for Christ. May the spirit of the living God envelop you, encourage you, inspire you, fill you with love, and fill you with peace as you go forth from this time of worship to serve and to be in the service for Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen, and all the people said, Amen. amen.